when Real ID was first announced to the country and to the world, the state of Maine was the first state in the country to say, no thanks, we're not going to do this. And with our action last year in the 123rd legislature, we became the last state in the country to agree to do it. I would like nothing more than to have Maine continue to live up to its motto of I lead and be the first state to repeal Real ID. One of the reasons why I think we should seriously consider this bill is the cost of Real ID uh, to the state of Maine. A burden to the state of Maine of $71 million in this day and age um, is untenable. So, uh, Rep uh, Secretary of State, Tom Lamb. But nonetheless, Congress has done utterly nothing with the Real ID Act, and uh, that is the case today. It is, it, is, it, is, um, it is hard to say what they're going to do. So I'm going to stay away from that for a moment and talk about where we've been and where we are. And um, uh, over the last four years, our department, the uh, Department of the Secretary of State, Bureau of Motor Vehicles, in concert with the work of this committee, we have made significant changes to our licensing procedures and laws uh, outside of the Real ID Act. We ceased accepting expired foreign documents as identity documents. Uh, our protocol before is that as long as it was your picture and your signature, that's all we really cared about. Now we wish it to be current, not expired. Uh, and uh, we collected, we always had the option to collect social security numbers uh, to work with the Department of Human Services on the deadbeat dad law. Uh, that was made a requirement that people either had to present a, a social security number or some type of proof of, of ineligibility. Um, we have also, as Representative Masrick iterated, the, uh, the residency requirement was something that we saw as a significant gap. Uh, it had, you know, at one time no state required a residency requirement and we were one of the last to do that and we found it to be a vulnerability after working with law enforcement on a case where uh, people were coming in, who were being brought in from out of state whose uh, legal status was of question. Uh, the, the, the timeline of Real ID is fairly simple and I won't get into the, the details of it, but when it was passed in 2005, it had a three-year implementation date, May 11, 2008. The Department of Homeland Security was charged with developing rules to implement Real ID. They went through several drafts, and uh, we participated in a, in a process uh, to review those drafts um, with a number of other states. And I made a number of trips to Washington, D.C. to work on, the, on those proposals. Um, and rather than improve with state feedback, the state feedback from every state, not just Maine, was completely ignored. And the rules got worse and worse and worse. And finally, we were shut out of the process altogether, and there's sort of like this black blackout period where we didn't know what Homeland Security was doing. In the end, it took them just about two years and eight months out of those three years to develop the rules, which we were supposed to then implement, at least theoretically, within a few months. Recognizing the impossibility of that, Homeland Security then began a rather colorful and creative waiver process <coughs> that states that signaled intent to comply with the optional Real ID Act could then get a waiver for a certain period of time to give them time to implement. Um, in the early iterations, it was laughable. States were sending letters, like Arkansas New Hampshire, to the Department of Homeland Security saying, we have utterly no intent of complying with the law, but give us the waiver. And they received the waiver. Um, later, uh, we, we sort of, because the law in Maine prescribed the Secretary of State from having anything to do with real ID, we sort of held our ground. Um, and then the Department of Homeland Security um, flexed its muscles. And I think they were extraordinarily hard on our governor, who I know has taken a lot of flack on LD 2309. But he was left with very, really, in his defense, was left with very little choice. The, the Department of Homeland Security was, was essentially saying that if Maine did not sig not only signal compliance, but take affirmative legal steps to comply on a path of compliance that Maine residents would be subject to um, a denial of services that would not be subjected to any other citizen in the country. Um, no state is in compliance with Real ID. No state is anywhere near complying with Real ID. But in, the, the fear was that in May of 2008, 
that Maine citizens would not be able to use their Maine driver's licenses to board aircraft, access federal facilities, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the LD-2309 was, was submitted as part of an agreement with Homeland Security in order to obtain the waiver. Again, no other state was required to do this. And the legislature struggled mightily with the whole thing. It was a very difficult position for the legislature to be in. I was opposed to LD-2309. And as I've been opposed to the Real ID Act from its inception and been very hopeful that Congress would do something about it. Congress, in a very bipartisan fashion, has shown nothing but cowardice on this issue. They've stayed away from it. They've allowed the states to squirm and struggle in, a, in an era of uncertainty with, a, with, the, with the shadow of an unfunded mandate. And it is a mandate. I don't care what anybody says. This is not an optional law. If states do not comply, the citizens will be punished. Uh, now, there has been a change of administration. Last year, the residency requirement was enacted before the legal presence uh, requirement. There has been, uh, I think, I think the residency requirement has, has enhanced our security significantly in terms of the, in t really just in terms of the credibility of our credentials. Uh, the legal presence requirement, I'm not so sure. Uh, there have been some prosecutions at the federal level. Um, I don't think they necessarily had anything to do with the legal presence law as much as, they, as those prosecutions had to do with violations of federal law, and they may have occurred anyway. The timeline on Real ID is, calls for full implementation by 2017. And by 2014, we should have issued everyone under the age of 40 a Real ID. And the thinking on that break, under 40, over 40, is that Homeland Security has determined through its study that uh, you're much more less likely to be a terrorist if you're over 40. Interestingly, most of those listed on the terrorist watch list are over the age of 40. So I'm not quite sure where they got their information from. I am not opposed to entice, in enhancing our security of our credentials or protecting our country or anything like that. But this is whistling by the cemetery. It does nothing to enhance our, our, our security. And getting back to the remarks of Representative Harlow, which he was actually dead on, you know, the 9-11 hijackers, and I think, you know, at least the shield for Real ID comes from the 9-11 hijackings. Uh, the, the Real ID Act was rejected in a bipartisan fashion several times before it finally got attached. And because of the, of the, the phrase homeland security and national security, it's, it's managed to keep some legs under it. But in 2017, after you spend up to $25 billion across this country, to make gentlemen, like the 80-year-old man I'm talking about, uh, wait months to get his license. And by the way, we're just at the tip of the iceberg on implementation of Real ID. Legal presence is easy. The real work comes later when we have to actually not only get a look at your birth certificate, but image it into a database and verify its authenticity. That will be possible about the same time NASA develops a transporter beam to take us up to the International Space Station. Birth certificates exist in over 10,000 different formats around the country. Uh, many entities don't issue birth certificates or haven't uh, for, for a very long time. Foreign countries that don't exist anymore, how are we going to really verify their birth certificates? But you go through all that, and you spend all that money, and you make people wait in line. What's humming in the background is the fact that the federal government is not subject to real ID. And they are still issuing passports and visas the exact same way they did on September 10th, 2001. So the 9-11 hijackers, who this is really aimed at, I suppose, didn't get into this country with driver's licenses. They got here with visas issued by the United States Department of State. Um, these boxes, these are... Uh petitions that we collected um, after uh, the legislature passed 2309, the Real ID Bill from last year. Um, um, when this passed last year, uh, we uh, decided to do a people's veto. Uh, one I've not done, bef something I've not done before. It's very, very difficult to do. You must collect 55,000 signatures in 90 days, but really it ends up being about 45 by the time you get your petitions and the language is determined. Uh, we collected in about 45 days with virtually no money, 30,000 signatures in 45 days. I, uh, in collecting these signatures, we worked with Greens, we worked with Independents, we worked with Libertarians, we worked with Republic Arch Conservatives, and a very, very, uh, uh, very 
very to the left of center Democrats. Um, you will also find um, in there the cost to the states for implementing uh, Real ID. Uh, the first estimate was around 14 billion to the United States. It's to give you an idea that it's not just um, um, us Mainers here who don't like it. The the, the country does not like this this law. Um, over 16 states have uh, passed legislation in opposition, uh, direct opposition to this. Uh, Maine, we if we it would be 17 if Maine had not overturned our own law. There are 40 states overall who have either passed uh, legislation in direct opposition or have passed a resolution asking Congress to uh, repeal the Real ID Act of 2005. We are asking, we were the first in the nation, as Senator Damon said, to oppose. We were the first in the nation to overturn our own law. We'd like to be the first in the nation to repeal this law.